these uh, antidepressants have uh, some side effects and uh, these side effects can be increased uh, if the person who's taking them are not doing many exercises and uh, drinking alcohol and these side effects can be such as uh, increase or lose of weight uh, headaches and uh, sleepness uh, sleeplessness and uh, tiredness very well rami so uh, it looks like you uh, you read the chapter that prepared the topic that's great yes <laughs> anyone else so uh someone wants to add something to uh, what rami said just said Uh, so uh, the thing is that uh, the adverse effect that uh, uh, that Rami uh, uh, thought is uh, are not always seen in the patient. So, uh, like uh, they can uh, they can be seen in only in the high doses. Uh, but usually when the treatment is appropriate uh, and the doses are low, uh, the adverse effects uh, are not seen. And headache uh, is also like, uh, is very common adverse effect, but uh, is also can be easily treated with uh, uh, paracetamol. So Ahab, what uh, what do you know about the, the classification of the antidepressants? I don't know anything because I didn't study. Sorry. I don't know anything. <laughs> Why? I didn't study the chapter. Why? I don't know. <laughs> what what have you done instead? Have, what have you done instead? So, I should study the chapter before the lecture, or what? Before the lecture? Yes. What do you mean? I mean that I should have studied the chapter before the lecture and the, like, <laughs> like this. And what is the chapter before the lecture? Uh, okay. What do you mean by key? I mean that I have to study the chapter before the lecture and then come to you with my question. Uh, of course you should study, but why you uh, have not studied. So what was the reason? Ex what was what is excused for not studying? Like, do you have a textbook? Yes. 
so then do you have a device that you can open the PDF of course do you have a place quiet place so no one will disturb you I mean if you like have to start another classes that's fine uh, we will wait for you so okay anyway you have to find the quiet place like in Sahara for example go to the desert during the night and then you can study there okay or oh, are you uh, already in Kazakh no I'm in Egypt where it is Are you in the uh, in the Egypt? Yes, he's in Egypt. I think he has a uh, bad yeah. connection. Oh, I see. And and you are Rami, or also? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm in Kazan. So, uh, I think those. It, it's better to study in Kazan because conditions are better, uh, are like better. So that is why maybe a hub you should move to Kazan too. So arrive to Kazan, so you can study, and no one will disturb you. Yes. And Rami, uh, it's like uh, it's easy to study uh, in. Kazan than in the home country? Well, uh, it's the same. What? It's the same. Same? Yes. Because At least for me. Because uh, I know in Egypt, uh, the, I think in Egypt it's better. Because. No, in Kazan. What? In Kazan. In Kazan, but why? Uh, I have students from Egypt and they told yeah. me that uh, the fruits and vegetables are very cheap in Egypt so like you can buy they like, are actually very cheap and very delicious too uh, yes not just cheap delicious as well yeah uh, and the that uh, and that is the key for the stunning so like if you have plenty of food then <laughs> you can eat much and enjoy food and you can eat during the studying the so you can study and eat simultaneously and if you have plenty of uh, cheap food then just go to the market buy the food and then make eating and studying simultaneously because eating is pleasurable Studying is not much pleasure, uh, pleasurable, but you can combine this. You can combine pleasure with the uh, uh, with the uh, usefulness. So this in Russia because it's uh, like if you want to buy a food, then first of all you have to wait for a long line. There is a long line to buy a food, and then uh, it's expensive. Yeah, Delivery club or something like that. <laughs> you can order the, the, the delivery, but you have to wait three hours before it's oh, no. delivered. It's just only one hour. Oh, okay, <laughs> one even one hour because. But it's actually it's actually still quite expensive compared to here. Yes, it is yes. because there are so even if you are going to order it uh, delivered to you, it's still expensive. Yes, it, it, it is because there are not much companies that provide the service. So, that is why I think you are missing opportunity to study. Uh, so, and uh, if I had a chance, I would move to Egypt uh, next day because. Uh, they they sell the uh, the pepper for uh, it's 
one pound for the kilo it's so cheap here it is like 10 pound for the kilo at least during the summer during the winter it's about it's about 50 pounds yes so it's so expensive i like to use pepper in my cooking but i can't because of the price rami uh if you uh, like uh to uh uh pepper you can uh plant it yourself oh really yes you can buy a pepper one one piece and then uh inside there are seeds then you take those seeds uh and uh and uh put them to the soil uh, on with a pot and put it to the window so, uh, like uh, in vase not in vase but like you need a pot small pot for the plants nice. have you studied nice. botany yes of course I so like you you already know how to plot a, a, a yes sir, I do. so like use your knowledge of botany mm -hmm. Well, the, the thing is, uh, my my, uh, my place where I live, I don't get sun at all. Mm, uh, peppers don't need a much direct sunlight, just an, any light from the window. They don't need direct sunlight. So if there is a window, I think it, there should be any window. And it mm -hmm. is warm, so it is not cold, then uh, that's fine. Okay, uh, but still, this is only good for the uh, hot pepper, like chili. Because, do you like sweet pepper or hot? Both, actually. Both, but for the uh, hot pepper, that is fine, like because the fruits are small, and they can, uh, uh, they can develop uh, in the pot. They don't need much uh, soil. Uh, but if you want a sweet pepper that is usually have to grow much, then you need to move them outside, and you need some place to plant them outside. Usually it's backyard, but I mm -hmm. think in hostel you don't have a backyard. Or no, we don't. So, so unless you find one, then it's hard to to plant a pepper. Especially yes. during the winter, when the soil is frozen. Mm -hmm. That is why the pepper here in Russia, uh, during the winter, can be so the prices is are up to one hundred uh, Egyptian pound. So up yes. to one hundred. It's very expensive. Okay, then back, and that is why uh, most people here in Russia are depressed because during the winter, because they cannot buy a cheap uh, fruits and vegetables so and uh, instead they buy a uh, antidepressants so, yes <laughs> and uh, unfortunately uh, the there are different types of depression and uh, we mostly will talk about the major depression today uh, and uh, the research uh, have been shown that the depression is more common in developed countries that is uh, United States and Europe yes so, and it's mostly the disease of the rich people mm -hmm. so uh, and it's just so because not many people in developing countries have the chance to just be depressed and um, not be depressed, have the chance to let it affect their lives. Because if they let it affect their lives, then, well, their lives will be ruined. They and just... also, not everyone has, uh, in developing countries, not everyone can afford therapy. So that's why they are not also... Uh, tracked and they are not 
counted in these reports that say that that most of the depressed patients are in the USA or in developing or in developed countries. But I think that people who are depressed in developing countries are much more. They just that they are not estimated because not many people uh, recognize it or have the chance or have the opportunity to go to therapy. I totally agree with you, Sandy. Uh, and uh, indeed, the treatment is very expensive. No, not just the treatment, even therapy sessions are expensive. Uh, as for therapy, uh, the um, the therapy is done by by psychologists that are not they, they, that that are not medical or education. So and uh, so the and indeed uh, in uh, rich families the they they usually uh, uh, present to the psychologist but uh, it's not uh, the psychologist is usually not available in developing countries because uh, the his duties are usually transferred to another family member or the priest or the community uh, uh, member so and the therapy is also done but not officially like uh, for the children uh, most of the time the mother is the or the father is uh, the parents actually are the psychologist and uh, uh, then also the many children and also all the adults work hard and that is why they just don't have time to be depressed so uh, and uh, the in developing countries uh, the reasons for depression so there are less reasons for depression because uh, they they don't have drug usage uh, so they don't have street drugs because they don't have money for them and uh, they also don't abuse this the uh, sleeping on uh, drugs so that can lead to depression so anyway the in the rich countries uh, like Europe and use the prevalence of depression is about 16 percent and uh, uh, they they um, they report to the uh, doctor frequently for this uh, uh, indication or uh, and it looks like the prevalence uh, increases uh, in patients with diabetes and heart disease and heart disease is also more frequent in developed countries and in most patients the major depression is relapsing and remitting so uh, that is a first episode and uh, in two years after the first episode there is a 40% uh, chance that it will occur again and then if it occurs the second time after two years or within the two years then the risk of the third episode uh, is 75% and it will occur within five years uh, and uh, also about 30% uh, of the patients uh, will have uh, not completely treated 
and uh, the symptoms will remain. So uh, the and also the uh, the depression is divided to two types: unipolar and bipolar. Uh, and uh, the current protocol for the depression treatment is that uh, patients with uh, depressive symptoms should be screened for bipolar disorder. Uh, and according to the classification of the American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders or DSM-4, the uh, bipolar disorder is divided to three uh, stages, stage one, uh, two, and uh, the not other voice specified bipolar disorder or NOS. The NOS is not only nitric oxide solution but also the bipolar disorder that is not specified. And uh, frequently patients with bipolar disorder uh, mis are misdiagnosed as having unipolar disorder. Uh, and the difference uh, is that uh, the so the difference between the bipolar disorder and non-bipolar uh, depression is the existence of the mania. Do you know? Do you know what is a mania? It's uh, kind of the same as depression. No. It's like depression is depression. So like depression is the loss of the um, ability to obtain uh, uh, en enjoy enjoyment from the things that you usually enjoy with. Like for example, Rami likes to uh, likes the pepper, but if he can buy the pepper, then he has a depression. Rami, do you have a depression? Yes, I do. So that is what well, that is depression. <laughs> so nothing is. It's not um, actually. But I, uh, as much as I know, depression has no reasons and they it's not usually treated by the things that you love because if it's treated by the things that you love then it's just sadness not depression uh the thing is uh uh the depression is when rami has the uh has the pepper but still that done that is not making him happy so that is depression. So, Rami, exam uh, imagine that you are in Egypt. You can buy the uh, pepper, but you don't buy them. Or buy them, but eat them, but you don't happy. Uh -huh. So that will be depression. <laughs> uh, okay. So, but uh, I think when you cannot buy something that you like, it's it can also make you depressed because you're still not enjoying your life. Of course. Like, for example, you you love your sister or brother uh, or your parents and then they pass by and then you have a depression. So you lose those people that you, you love and then you are in depression.
So, uh, and what is mania? Sandy, what is the mania? Maybe it's uh, the side effects uh, associated with depression? No. The diseases don't have side effects. The drugs have side effects. Well, in movies and, and such, when they say that he's maniac, means that he's crazy, but... <laughs> yes. But it's... Okay. That's right. It's craziness, mm -hmm. like... <laughs> Uh, and usually it's not, this craziness is not uh, rational. Like, some people can be crazy, like, uh, for their work, like they like their work and they make uh, research or they, like, make a, a performance or they, or they go in for sports and win the competitions because they are crazy of their work that's fine but when they have some craziness that is not uh, normal like for example if uh, a woman will plant thousands of the same species uh, on her backyard and uh, it's uncontrollable some some uncontrollable uh, condition that don't have any purpose and you use not useful neither for the person nor for the society uh, and sometimes disturbs society <laughs> so this is mania like uh, Mania can be also dangerous, like uh, the murders can be maniacs, like if they kill the people, like if the mania... Uh -huh. Question? No? Uh, and for example, if a person have a mania for the killing people and then he is a serious killer, so that is... Um, and so this is a very dangerous type of the mania but some mania can be less dangerous so but uh, anyway mania is like a uncontrollable uh, condition that is uh, focused around the something uh, that is not uh, useful but the patient thinks that it is useful and no one can stop him so the first is thing is uh, when uh, the depression is diagnosed is to to check if the patient a patient has a mania second thing is to to check is uh, if he or she has a suicidal ideation so uh, it is very important uh, for all depressed patients because uh, the de antidepressant drugs have a side effect that lead to suicidal ideations so especially in teenagers So, uh, and that is why before, before starting the, uh, tr the treatment with antidepressant, the, uh, su uh, the suicide risk should be evaluated. And the presence of suicidal or homicidal ideation uh, should be uh, checked if there is any plan for suicide you know what is suicide uh, right yes uh, 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 what is the uh, uh, what is the uh, look of the uh, 
Muslim religion to the suicide? No religion, you can't kill yourself. So it's forbidden. Of in so in Muslims, it's for, for, forbidden, right? Yes, it's forbidden. Why? Just haram. Haram. <laughs> like you know. Okay. So it's like a very bad haram. Yes, you'll go to hell. What? If you kill yourself, you'll go to hell. To the hell. Okay. So it is the same as you kill another person, right? Yes. Okay. So like, uh, like in most uh, uh major rel religions in Muslim cities are. Uh, very uh, very bad haram right right yes yes okay good so however uh, uh, there are muslims that i think there are so it is is it a common in most like it is like do, it is possible in muslims or like if a person is religious he will never suicide yes we don't have su suicides as much like it's not very common so it's less than in europe right yes like for example uh, if there's someone suicided in iraq it's gonna be all over the news all over the country because it is really rare yes also in Egypt. i see that that's very good actually uh and uh so however uh uh because not all um, patients will be muslims i don't know if what is the uh, uh what is the prevalence of of the muslims in egypt how how many percent of the population are Muslim? Maybe more than 90%. Okay, uh, if you have 90% Muslim, so they don't suicide, but still there are 10% that can, right? Yeah. So that is why we. No, even Christian people can. I have never see anybody of them kill themselves. You, you, you don't see any what? Any of Christian people kill himself. Christian? I've never seen. Yes. So uh, the, the, the left 10% are Christian? No, not only Christian. Maybe some Jews. Okay. <laughs> Maybe some big <Indian. laughs> But uh, I, I mean still uh, there may be people that are not non-religious. So that is why. Uh, and yes. then you... You can travel yeah. to Europe, and then uh, in Europe it's very common. And then children that they don't uh, yet, uh, or teenagers that are not yet uh, realized their uh, religion or cannot completely understand everything. So uh, anyway, uh, the, there should be assessment of the suicide. Uh, and uh, so to access that, uh, the f uh, the physician should evaluate the let lethality of the suicide plan, and, and then also uh, to check the presence of psychotic symptoms, hallucinations, and severe anxiety. So even though the patient uh, may not suicide themselves, them, uh, themselves, they can have uh, hallucinations. Do you know what uh, what is halluc hallucinations? Yes. Yes. What is it? Imagining things that are not really there. Okay. So and then the the patient may imagine that he is jumping to the swimming pool. But in reality, he can jump from the uh, from the 
high building. So, and that is the way that uh, even re religious person can uh, perform a suicide. So, and then uh, he will be in uh, uh, in Iraq or Egypt. Uh, then it will be uh, in the news. So. So then, that is why uh, assessment should be done anyway. So even the patient is the Muslim and he is religious, so then he can suicide uh, accidentally. And then also the presence of alcohol. I think in uh, Muslim countries uh, this is not uh, the case because the alcohol is prohibited completely, and the sentence for the alcohol abuse is the death penalty right no no <laughs> no yeah. no why uh like uh, the thing is <laughs> uh the media just lying like many of my friends in iraq drink alcohol there's no penalty for them or anything so, but if they caught you Drunk or something like that in the street, send you to the prison. Okay, but it's not death penalty, right? No, actually, in Iraq, uh, there's some people uh, uh, can drink with bags in, in the streets, there is no prison for them. Okay, and uh, and what is the penalty? It's a uh, fine or what? Uh, nothing unless you do something harm. If you hurt anybody in the street or something like that, they will send you to the prison, of course. Yes. But how long is the prison? Uh, maybe two, three days until someone pay to get you out. Oh, I see. So several days. Only. That's actually not, not a sentence. No, but if you hurt someone really bad, it's many maybe be three years or something like that. okay i see but i uh, usually when people are drunk they <laughs> they don't hurt someone they just uh, they just can shout or usually you no know, no i uh, know people that when they are drunk they start getting mad and start fighting with any you know, everyone around them Okay, but usually when the people are drunk, they cannot fight very well because their uh, reactions are slowed down and then they can easily be fought. And if they I know, but I know, but maybe he got a caught a knife <laughs> and something that he will hurt you. Uh, I agree that it depends on the person. Uh, and also from the community and other person that will see because if the person understands that he is drunk then they probably will try to uh, just let him go and don't fight to him uh, because uh, like he is not controlling much of himself and uh, mm -hmm. and some people can understand him and even help just uh, if he is not an aggressive then they can give him shelter or drive him at home uh, or for example if uh, like uh, if uh, the person is drunk in the bar then he goes to drive and then the uh, people that are nearby can uh, call him a, a, a taxi so he will not get to the accident uh, and kill someone and himself so uh, like uh, that depends but still uh, there is uh, alcohol and uh, drugs use uh, substance use like the heroin co cocaine also can contribute to the depression and uh, I was uh, uh, and uh, in other Muslim countries like the uh, Emirates, 
they have a, a penalty for death death penalty for the alcohol use no not alcohol use for drugs like cocaine and no i mean in the united arab emirates yes, yes. no no, no. Uh, it's actually wrong not uaa in uh, saudi arabia maybe death i think oh in saudi arabia okay yeah i, I think it's the only country that uh, do this because it's like uh, the main country of islam or something okay i see no but in uaa like if you uh, if they catch you with cocaine or something like that in the street, it's like they will kill you immediately. I see, I see. So, uh, the uh, and uh, that is I think that the that is because the substance use is equal to the alcohol use in those countries. So, uh, but the substance have become more like uh, uh, more gives more trouble than alcohol because alcohol can be treated and substance use is also treated but the treatment is usually less effective and longer and also more more expensive so and then also the uh, previous attempts of the suicide should be evaluated and then the, the family history uh, of exposure to suicide also should be evaluated. So actually, when someone is uh, depressed, the, these are the major things that uh, the physician will ask the patient. Uh, and uh, this is also checked with the points, like there is a special uh, questionnaire for uh, evaluation and then if the points are above something that that means that first a patient is suicidal uh, and then those patients who are suicidal should be hospitalized so that is important so they should be kept in the special conditions so they cannot suicide uh, and uh, those patients with a severe depression should be referred to psychiatrist. So, and psychiatrist is actually in the hospital, so those patients should be hospitalized. And significant, uh, so the significant can. Uh, so the significant uh, suicidal that, uh, that cannot be uh, stopped in the community uh, should be transferred to the uh, to the hospital and then a uh, significant loss of the weight also uh, should be uh, evaluated and then how much the patient is intent to harm other people uh, that also depends uh, and the presence of the delusions and hallucinations also important and uh, uh, if the patients also have uh, some uh, drug abuse uh, then he sh also should be hospitalized. And also the the unipolar depression that is uh, accompanied by uh, suicidal ideation frequently uh, is has another uh, anxiety disorders so and then these other disorders should be treated as well and 
uh, after the diagnosis the uh, the patients uh, should not the the patients often will not accept the diagnosis of depression so you will tell the patient that you have a depression and then the patient will answer he will reply to you look I don't have depression you are crazy <laughs> you just want to sell me the depressant drugs <laughs> go to the hell <laughs> so if that happens you should not insist because it's common for patients to, uh, to uh, not to accept the diagnosis of it. because if you have like some disease like enter uh, hypertension then you measure the um, the pressure show to the patient and he will see that the pressure is high then he will believe to you because you have uh, 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 the manometer or like if you have any other like the patient is sneezing coughing then he realizes himself that he has a disease but the depression can be cannot be seen with an eye especially with the naked eye so uh, that is why you should uh, explain the, to the patient that depressions are common so and that they are associated with emotional symptoms like changes of the mood and physical symptoms like fatigue uh, the headache like Rami told us that the headache is the adverse effect of the antidepressants right yes so uh, but the depression itself can make can lead to the headache so and when the, the depressed uh, the patient will take uh, the, the antidepressant we cannot evaluate uh, we cannot find out if the headache is from the depression itself or from the antidepressant drug. And then also abdominal pain and uh, muscle pain is also common. Uh, and also the depression increases the perception of physical symptoms. Like the things will feel different when you are depressed. And the reason for the depression is some biological changes in the brain, but we are not yet fully understand those changes. And uh, the treatment, you should also explain that to the patient that the, the treatment with uh, medication uh, and psychotherapy is usually will shorten the course of depression and, and decrease the symptoms so if you don't treat the, the depression then it can self-resolve uh, but the only difference is that uh, the time for the resolution can be longer and also it can be harder for the patients to uh, to work or to study like if Rami cannot buy the uh, pepper and uh, if he have a depression because of that then uh, uh, he cannot study well uh, Ahab, uh, I wonder if you have a depression no sure Yes, but uh, the depression is very common and is associated with emotional symptoms like mood changes and physical symptoms like fatigue, headache, abdominal pain, and muscle pain. Do you have any of these? No. No. No, I don't. You don't have. Yeah. And. <laughs> yes. uh, from one month ago. From what, Rami? 
actually, when we are home, we do, we don't have depression. But you have when you are in Kazan, right? Yes. That is because you love your home. So, and yes. you lose you lose your home, and then you get a depression. Yes, so, exactly. Uh, and this is normal. So yes, mom. Uh, because you miss your um, friends, parents, uh, your siblings, uh, mm -hmm. and other people you love in your country, and uh, your uh, uh, your pet, a partner, or the wife uh, or husband. So, uh, and this makes a depression. So that's normal. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but most depressed patients will say that they don't have depression. Like when I ask a hub, he uh, if he has a depression, then the hub told that he don't. But me as a uh, physician, uh, that is not a diagnostic uh, criteria for uh, for me because uh, patients usually themselves don't realize they have a depression and they can. It's very common for the patient to uh, reject the diagnosis of depression, like we have uh, in with the EHAP. And I suppose that EHAP is uh, has a depression. What do you think? No. So you no. see, if the patient is rejecting diagnosis, so this is a common, very common for the. Or the, for the de depression, and I think that is the reason a hub is not prepared for the class. So, <laughs> no, actually, I was with my grandson. What you? I was with my friends like yesterday, and we were playing, and something like that. So I didn't study. <laughs> uh, what uh, have you played with your friends? Football, of course. Football? Are you footballist? Yes. Uh, Hab, do you know that we have a football team in Kazan? N yes, I know Robin Kazan and Dinamo Kazan. Also. No, I mean uh, the local no, students team. No, I don't know. You don't know. So then I recommend you when you return to Kazan, uh, find the uh, ask uh, for the point from the students. Uh, the, we have a football team that is not, it's uh, uh, it's uh, common for the Russian speaking and English speaking su students. So uh, and they require good footballists. Because we usually lose to other teams, like other <laughs> faculties. I know football teams from KAI and uh, KFU, but in Kigamo, I don't know anyone. We we have also. I will give you uh, 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 the contacts if you if you cannot find. But just ask in the hostel. Do you live in the hostel? No. No, that is the reason. So. Uh, ask someone who lives in the hostel, they will uh, get you in touch with them. So, if you are a good footballist, are you a goalkeeper? No, no, player. Uh, uh, what kind of forward? Sometimes I play like attacker and sometimes like a defender. It depends. Okay, so uh, that, that is very useful. Uh, so, please participate and uh, uh, in the uh, team play, football okay. playing because Rami, we have Rami also in. Rami is <laughs> a good player. Okay. Yes. Uh, that's good that you are in Kazan. Please contact uh, the uh, the team leader, and then. How, how can I contact him? Sorry. How how can I contact him? Uh, are you living in the hostel? No, no. I just got out. So uh, then, uh, do you have a?
Facebook? Yes, I do. So uh, there is a group yeah, in Facebook that uh, Kazan State Medical University students. So please ask uh, in this group, okay? Okay. So and I think uh, there is also maybe there is in of Kontakti, it's a, a, like a Russian version of the Facebook. So there is also a group for the footballist team. But so and also you can uh, uh, if you do if you if you can't find then ask the PT or uh, PT professor. So the main building uh, there is a gym or uh, gym do you know where is the gym or on the Mayakovsky street no our PT is uh, in uh, Gook in Gook so ask in the Gook when you have a PT class do you still have yes. no we don't this time. Uh, but uh, just uh, when you are going passing by uh, go mm -hmm. and ask about the football team and then they will give you the context Okay, thank you. Thank you to you because uh, we are losing in pharmacy. <laughs> so and then, uh, uh, do do you like football? <laughs> yes, I am very. Uh, I am fan of the football, but not like like I don't like to go to the major events like the car final cups, but uh, on local basis, like I like the sport, like participate. Yes participating uh, in sport myself you know, uh, rather than the visiting the football events that are like uh, events like uh, the World Cups or something like that. Yes. So, yes. Why don't the university organize a football competition between the groups or something like that? A university is organizing. Just you are part not participating because you are you are not our group like our group if we know any competition we can play because we don't uh, it's not only me and Rami we have also Ahmed Sabah and Ahmed Salim they are great footballers okay wonderful why you are not telling me before <laughs> that's okay that's very good actually uh, uh, that's uh, uh, Every, every Arab country have many talents in football. Like uh, all of us play football. Oh, that's that's very good. That is so good. <laughs> I am very glad to hear that. So we will need to uh, to uh, to make a, a new team. So and uh, so uh, we can enforce our team with the better players. So that will increase our chances to uh, to win. So that's very good. Uh, and the girls, Sandy, Hulud, are you here? No, I'm, I'm not a fan of football. No, I am not uh, talking about uh, being a fan or participating in, like, we also have, actually, we also have a female team, but I don't, uh, in, well, like, even if, if you don't uh, like participating, like uh, playing football yourself, you can visit those football uh, events that men are participating and then maybe the reason, uh, maybe the reason it's because we aren't living in the hostels because when I was in Irkutsk I was participating in all events we are we played against people from uh, Vietnam and Indonesia and from Af some African countries. In Irkutsk? Yes. Uh, have you studied in Irkutsk? It was uh, my bad faculty there. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and uh, Sandy, uh, if you don't like playing football, uh, then you can still visit the, uh, the tournaments, uh, the events that uh, a hub and Trami will participate and then you can help them to encourage them to play. Sure. Yes, we need some fun. Uh, I, I, I think she likes uh, volleyball. She's very good. Sandy, is that is that true? 
no. <laughs> Are you sure? Because we have a very promising female volleyball club, uh, volleyball by a uh, uh, team, and uh, like um, several years ago, they even participated in the uh, federal competition, so they win like the. So in Tatarstan, like they win war the the first in Tatarstan. So uh, I encourage you to participate to Sandy, uh, because. Uh, I'll I'll probably make them lose. <laughs> no, that's not true because we lose all we are losing already in volleyball. So <laughs> volleyball and football. <laughs> she, she's professional. She's just shy. So uh, then. Uh, yeah, I think you should uh, forget about your shyness uh, and uh, make the our team uh, win again. So, and you can also uh, encourage Hulud. Hulud is also uh, playing volleyball. No, I'm better. <laughs> You're better, so what still you can uh, ask her to what to encourage you, like cheerleader cheerleading okay sure just when we go to kazan okay very well thank you thank you very very much for that so uh i'm not sure so because of the uh covid the all uh, all the sport events are cancelled uh and uh but when that is why you have time to prepare so <laughs> And we have actually we played here in Egypt four four times a week or five. Uh, so very frequently. Okay. Or you can play here too because uh, many um, many hostels have a football or uh, football playground playground uh, in the backyard. So there is a hostel, and then at the backyard, it's very close. So very convenient. So you can play football uh, frequently. Uh, okay. So uh, and also uh, the changing of the lifestyle can treat the depression too. Like for example, if you are depressed and you like football, and then if you play football, and that will help you to be less depressed too. So that is why. Patients are encouraged to engage in exercise and positive activities. So, and this is called behavioral activation. <laughs> and um, because when you have a depression, usually you stop playing football. So you stop, stop playing volleyball and then uh, you feel even more depressed. And... Uh, of course, it is not uh, effective just playing football or volleyball. It's not uh, effective self, but uh, it will help uh, to most of the patients and is uh, additional treatment for the patients with depression. And uh, Kulud, can you ask? Can I ask you a question? Hulud. Sandy, uh, could you please send Hulud a message so she will reply? I think she has bad internet or oh, something. Okay. Uh, do you know if Hulud uh, is uh, uh, practicing the yoga? Yoga? No. Uh, she she goes to the gym only, yes. just regular workouts. Yes. Okay, but still, uh, uh, the the gym, the going to gym is also uh, good for the relaxation. So be, I'm asking about the yoga because yoga is one of the techniques for relaxation. Uh, and when the depression. It depends on the it depends on the type of yoga. Okay and. What are the types of the yoga? No, there is yoga for uh, 
Losing weight, for example, this one does not help you to relax at all. Uh, for example. Uh, I think that is misunderstanding uh, because the uh, the philosophy of the yoga is has never was about losing the weight. Never. Yeah, I yeah, know. I think th that is just a mass media uh, because uh, the, because most uh, most uh, 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 most people are uh, interested in losing weight. So no one is interested in relaxation techniques and the philosophy of the yoga. And I'm actually interested in the relaxation techniques and the philosophy of yoga. Uh, I tried these yoga classes before here and um, sometimes they were today's classes about yoga for losing weight, for example, and it was not relaxing at all or calming. And other days uh, they will give us classes for mental health yoga, for example. These ones were relaxing. Okay, so uh, I think that the mental health yoga is like a true yoga. And the uh, losing weight yoga is like a European modified yoga for the those that want to lose weight. So that is not actually the... Uh, the original yoga or the uh, uh, so the so uh, and actually the mental uh, the losing of the weight is not only the physical exercise it's also the mental uh, state so uh, uh, have you ever tried to use a uh, Bicycle in the gym. Have I ever tried to what? Uh, so in gyms they have a bicycle that you can oh, use. Oh, um, I I have one like this at home. At home, standing bicycle. Yes. Have you? Uh, it's yes, yes. W what is the name for that? I'm not sure of the name. It's like a bicycle, like you said, uh, with two holders. Okay, so uh, have you uh, used it regularly? Do you, do you use yes. it regularly? Yes. Do you lose weight? Yes. <laughs> Much? Yes. Sure? Yes. Uh, because uh, the recent research has been shown that uh, using the standing bicycle is less effective because the objects don't move around so maybe um uh, i also try to watch my food so maybe that helped too to watch what my food what, what i eat your food yes just you look down no like like uh take care of what i eat oh i see uh, mm. that's of of course it is the if you want to to decrease your weight, the diet is uh, necess is necessary. So you can, uh, and also the physical exercise, physical mm -hmm. exercise and diet are required anyway. So that is not a question. Uh, but uh, I mean, uh, if you take you take bicycle and go outside and uh, run. Or uh, no, I did not mean this one. I meant the the one like in the gym. In the gym, but uh, yes, I did not mean the bicycle in the streets. I mean, if you will use bicycle in the streets, you will lose more weight. Yes, just because I agree. your brain will see the objects moving around, and then it will burn more calories just because you are outside. So, if you have an opportunity and you have a bicycle, I recommend you to instead of using the standing one. It's more effective to use outside. So, uh, and if you are in Kazan, you can also uh, use it instead of the public transportation. So you can uh, avoid the contact with the uh, infected patients in the bus. So uh, it's also very useful. 
Rami, uh, how do you get to the university? By bus. By bus? Yes. So, but uh, is it is it crowded in the bus? Mm, yes, always bus number uh, trolleybus number three is always crowded. So you use a trolley bus. So yes. Uh, uh, but it is not much difference. It's still very. Uh, uh, there are many people, and that is why uh, you can. Uh, the uh, uh, you this way you increase opportunity for infection or transfer, transfer. especially with COVID. Yes, I know. I th I think uh, like uh, now it's uh, spreading again in Russia. Yes, it is, and not only in Russia, but in many other countries like France, Belgium. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so uh, that is why I recommend you walking. So if the distance is not like from the uh, the distance from the main building to the pharmacy uh, uh, faculty is one hour walking. Mm -hmm. And if you are a, you are if you are a good runner. You can, during summer yes. and even actually during the winter, you can run it in 30 minutes. But uh, I will reach the university sweaty. Uh, that's fine. No one will, uh, uh, no one, no one will blame you for the sweat. Uh, the only, they need only a mask, and your body temperature is should be fine. <laughs> That is all yes. they need now. <laughs> yeah, but but if I run, my body temperature will increase. Uh, you should slow down when you approach the university. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, one moment, please. Uh, I have to check the door. Mm -hmm. So let's continue. Uh, and uh, uh, so when you approach the university, just slow down, and then when you are finally are there, uh, stand a little um, before outside, and it's now cold, so you will uh, uh, you will dissipate heat fast, and your body temperature will uh, normalize very fast. Uh, and uh, and also running is very effective, uh, the most effective exercise for losing weight. So if you have a goal to lose the weight, Sandy, so then uh, you can easily make it just by running to be between the buildings uh, every day. So I actually, I prefer walking. I, I walk uh, a lot. Walking is not as effective. So uh, like running is so much effective that you will then uh, you will then love running so much when you see the results <laughs> believe me <laughs> so it is the most effective exercise in the world like just if you make like the whole you can make a, uh, exercises during the whole day in the gym and one hour running will be the same effectiveness like and sometimes even more effective so that is why uh, and it's free like you don't need to pay for the gym yeah, i will try it so please try and also yes yeah, think in G egypt there are parks oh Khalut is uh living near the park so you can run together so you can encourage her to the lifestyle changes. So this is also very important for the treatment of depression. So I think Hlut also have depression because she is not speaking uh, much. <laughs> uh, 
and uh, and I, I understand Hulud because because of the COVID they don't make a fashion shows now and uh, then it's like uh, you cannot see the new dresses so that is why it's also can lead to depression so uh, so when you stop uh, participating in the uh, li uh, in the positive activities then uh, that also may lead to uh, that so this can be due to depression so and that is why uh, going back and exercising uh, and uh, making positive activities uh, is also helpful in the treatment of depression and uh, I think you have noticed that we are uh, uh, talking about one hour, one and a half hour, and we uh, we don't uh, even start it. The uh, we never we don't name any drug yet, right? Do you see the difference? Yes. <laughs> so that is not because I forget about that. That is because in the treatment of depression the drugs are not the main thing to, to think about because uh, and they are not effective alone so before oh, of course you can use the drugs but uh, then the uh, psychotherapy is uh, maybe more effective than the drugs and then the lifestyle changes also can uh, increase the uh, treatment effectiveness so uh, uh, so and also relaxation techniques are also useful for the uh, changing of the lifestyle so uh, uh, then the most effective of this is psychotherapy and psychotherapy uh, usually is uh, com uh, is combined with the antidepressant medication uh, and psychotherapy is required when the de depression is uh, mild or, or severe severe especially when the depression is severe uh, and uh, and also the moderate so um, mild moderate uh, de depression it requires psychotherapy uh, with the uh, uh, psychotherapists uh, and uh, so there are special seminars uh, and the research uh, showed that uh, the combination with the psychotherapy the treatment is more effective uh, but the bad thing is that uh, not all insurance uh, companies will cover the cost of the psychotherapy because it's very expensive so, uh, Sandy, do you have uh, access to the psychotherapy in Egypt? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't know anyone who tried it. I mean, it's. Uh, do you have uh, insurance, medical insurance? Yes, but I'm also not sure if... Uh, if such issues such as depression and anxiety and such are um, under the same insurance. Such as what? Like the depression, I'm not sure if they are covered. About coverage? Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Yeah. Oh. So, and it is common that uh, usually the, uh, the normal insurance will not cover unless you have a primary like 
but to have a primary you need to be like a, a, the director of the company like this uh, chief officer of the company or like very rich people <laughs> so for most of the uh, like uh, working people they don't have that coverage and that is why they don't have access uh, so anyway uh, if the patients are will not respond due, uh, during 12 weeks of psychotherapy they should start an antidepressant so like the uh, psychotherapy is an uh, equivalent can be used as an equivalent uh, uh, but uh, if it's not effective during uh, three months then the antidepressant drug should be started uh, additionally to the psychotherapy of course so, uh, and some physicians will start antidepressants uh, earlier than uh, 12 weeks so that is three months uh, so and uh, that depends on the patients some patients will respond to the psychotherapy uh, without drugs other patients will require the drugs and psychotherapy combination so together at the same time and uh, the patients that have a severe and chronic depression that is recurrent and lasts for more than two years should be treated with the combination of, of the uh, antidepressants and psychotherapy so this is the most expensive uh, treatment uh, especially for the patients that don't have a uh, insurance coverage uh, and uh, the good thing is that patients can be can uh, self uh, uh, make a self treatment with the psychological interventions so and the research have been shown that the um, many psychological interventions appear to be effective for the depression and uh, the uh, the there is a guideline uh, of the agency for healthcare policy and research that is H, uh, AHCPR and this agency concluded uh, that uh, for the patients with major depression uh, the efficacy of the therapy uh, was uh, uh, was uh, higher and as high as 50 about 50 percent uh, with the cognitive therapy or behavioral th therapy or interpersonal therapy so and also the family therapy is uh, effective so for example if the wife has a depression the husband can be the therapist so that is free of charge so no need to pay for the husband uh, or vice versa or like a, if you have a family uh, like a uh, huge family then any member of the family can be even your pet can be your uh, therapy <laughs> do, uh, do you have pets no I don't you don't have uh, and uh, do you know if Hulud has a pet she doesn't <laughs> she doesn't do so but still even friends can be therapy like you can uh, use Hulud and vice versa so and uh, also psychodynamic uh, psychotherapy 
and problem solving therapy are also effective. So that is any any therapy that uh, is can be done is good. So uh, and uh, and uh, sometimes the uh, cognitive therapy may be even more effective than the uh, medication or at, at least as effective as the medication and even can prevent the re relapses reoccurrence of the depression and uh, also interpersonal th psychotherapy can prevent recurrence or uh, uh, still less effective than the medication so uh, the most effective of these therapies are the mindfulness based cognitive therapy so uh, this is most effective as effective as the medicine or sometimes even more effective because medicines they have relapse all the time but cognitive therapy uh, prevent the relapses so you don't need to uh, to treat again in several months sorry um, uh, So, uh, so both the med uh, medical therapy and the psychotherapy are uh, both effective for the treating depression, uh, and efficacy is similar. Uh, and nowadays, we are not sure if what is the best. Uh, pharmacotherapy uh, or the psychotherapy but of course I'm a pharmacist and uh, I uh, the usually if you ask the pharmacist pharmacist will tell you that the uh, pharma uh, pharmacotherapy is more effective and if you ask a psychiatrist then a psychiatrist will tell you that the psychotherapy is more effective <laughs> but please don't believe that uh, like me I am a pharmacist but like uh, uh, I know that they are equally effective so uh, and it has been proven many times in multiple randomized trials uh, and so if someone tells you uh, a different story then don't please don't be, don't don't believe to them uh, and in the UK, uh, the uh, psychotherapy is recommended as initial treatment for, with, uh, for the mild depression. Uh, and uh, uh, in the US, on the uh, psychotherapy is recommended only for the severely depressed patients so I, th I suppose that in use they have a more expensive psychotherapy than in UK and in Europe generally and uh, so that is why it's only indicated for severely depressed patients uh, and uh, for the mild and moderate depression uh, the uh, the option is either medication or psychotherapy and uh, uh, the patients that are treated with the medication should be also followed up regularly and it is very important because of the compliance of the patients and also uh, uh, to develop the supportive re re relationships with the uh, physician and also with the pharmacist 
So uh, finally, we get to the antidepressant. So uh, do we have time? How how many uh, hours we have left? Sandy, how many? Uh, like you mean on the time table? Have time. So, how much minutes we have left before the end of the class? Well, uh, and the timetable says we finish at one five. One five. So we have mm -hmm. uh, about half an hour because you have uh, the uh, lunch break, one hour lunch break also. So, mm -hmm. uh, I think about half an hour. So I ch will try to uh, be short with the antidepressants. Uh, so the the major classes for antidepressants are the first generation that is monoamine oxidases or MAO, MAOs uh, and tricyclic antidepressants or TCAs. Uh, so MAOs are so are monoamine oxidase inhibitors and uh, three cyclic antidepressants are TCAs. So this is the first generation. The second generation is uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So this is SSRI. SSRI uh, is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And uh, the second uh, group is inhibitors of the reuptake of both serotonin and norepinephrine or SNRI. So selective norepinephrine and uh, sorry, uh, serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. So SSRI and SNRI. So in like in most of the medical uh, fields, the abbreviations are used uh, are ex in intensively and they are used more intensively in the uh, central nervous system diseases. So, uh, and there are some other drugs of the not uh, neither of this group but they are like there is not much of them. Uh, and uh, the antidepressants are beneficial for patients with unipolar major depression. So that is why it's very important to access the type of the depression at the start of the therapy. Uh, and uh, the Usually the start of the treatment uh, is with the fluoxetine, that is SSRI, uh, or venlafaxine, uh, that is SNRI. So the therapy is usually started with the second generation uh, drugs. Uh, and uh, the remission occurs uh, more in patients uh, with the that that receive the uh, antidepressant and uh, the response uh, is occurring more frequently, like fifty percent, like fifty eight percent, uh. uh versus the 40 percent so if you don't treat the patient 30, 40 percent of the patients uh, will uh, stop uh, will be treated from the depression but if you uh, if you give the medicine then it will be 58 that is uh, 18 percent more so uh, it's not it's not much but still uh, uh, the antidepressants are effective in the treatment of the depression 
um, but the response rate is from 50 to 60 percent uh, and it can be even less so we are not sure about the uh, exact value but it's about 50 percent so like if you uh, if you sell the uh, fluoxetine for a hundred patients in your pharmacy then only 50 of these patients will be uh, cured by the fluoxetine and then another 50 will uh, return and comply to you that your medicine is not effective give my, Benny, my money back for those you should uh, explain that the uh, antidepressants are only effective in the 50% of the uh, cases and that is why they should repeat the treatment so they can be treated so and then from this 50 25 will return third time and you tell them that you should repeat it again and repeat it again uh, uh, until all of your patients uh, will be treated completely so eventually all your patients will be treated but the question is only how many uh, courses they need to pass so and uh, there is no clear guidance on the how to choose uh, the uh, specific antidepressants uh, and uh, so and actually there is no difference between the efficacy among the uh, different antidepressants like there is first generation and second generation so if you take second generation any drug will be effective so that is why it's recommended to select the cheapest one uh, and uh, uh, the choosing of the drug uh, is based on the tolerance of the patient uh, and uh, also depends on the dose so with higher doses usually patient compliance is lower because of the side effect and uh, that is why uh, if the patient is not ready to suffer the adverse effect then uh, another drug sh another antidepressant should be chosen with less side effects but usually it's more expensive And uh, SSRIs, that is selective serotonin re, uh, reuptake inhibitors, are the first line uh, for the treatment because they have fewer side effects uh, and they don't have a, a lethal dose, so so they are not dangerous with overdose. Uh, and the guidelines from the American College of Physicians that is ACP are recommend to initiate uh, the treatment uh, one of 20 second generation antidepressants uh, and these uh, drugs are abupropoin, citalopram, duloxetine S citalopram, fluoxetine. Fluoxetine is the cheapest one, and that is why most of the treatment is started with the fluoxetine. Then fluvoxamine, uh, mirtazapine, nifazadone, and paroxetine. Also sertraline, trazodone, and venlafaxine. Venlafaxine is the most expensive drug because, uh, but it's also the most, the newest one. But still, uh, uh, 
all of these 20 uh, antidepressants have the similar efficacy and side effects. Uh, and uh, except the nefazadone have some hepatotoxicity, so if patients has a hepatic disease, uh, the liver disease, then uh, nefazadone is not recommended. But still can be used, uh, but I personally don't recommend. Like, if uh, I would like to treat my mom, then I will not uh, use a nefazadone for that. Because all patients are usually uh, more susceptible for the hepatotoxicity. Okay, so, uh, and the side effects are, uh, are uh, weight gain. So, uh, all antidepressants will uh, lead to the weight gain. So, but some of them will gain more. Uh, and others will gain less. Uh, and the research has been shown that uh, nitazapine and paroxetine uh, are associated with more weight gain uh, than uh, fluoxetine, sertraline, trazodone, and venlafaxine. So, uh, Sandy if you want a less weight gain for your patients so you should uh, recommend them to use the fluoxetine, sertraline, tazodone and venlafaxine and don't use mirtazapine and thoraxetine but if vice versa the patient wants to gain your weight so then can uh, you should prescribe uh, mirtazapine and thoraxetine so dispense mirtazapine and thoraxetine uh, and uh, the second issue is the what? Use this one. It's Sandy, I cannot hear you completely. Uh, Sandy, your connection mm -hmm. is not uh, constant. Can I hear your voice? Do you hear me now? Yes, now it's better. Okay, uh, from what I know is that most people use citalopram or escitalopram. Mm -hmm. They use citalopram? Yes, most people um, use citalopram or escitalopram. It's the most common one. Uh, in Egypt? I'm not sure if it's just in Egypt, it's just uh, people that I know who oh. are depressed mostly use Skitalpram or Skitalpram. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, the effectiveness is uh, actually the same for, uh, for, for all of them and uh, there is like uh, still uh, the difference is only inside effects. So, uh, so is uh, is citalopram or is citalopram less effective? No, effectiveness is the same than others. No, no, same effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Difference is only in the side effects. So and and then the uh, second issue is diabetes and uh, the depression can cause diabetes itself uh, and uh, that is why uh, the people should be uh, uh, diagnosed for symptoms of the diabetes 
uh, uh, and some uh, antidepressants can increase the risk of diabetes. Uh, and first, uh, first generation antidepressants like amitriptyline has uh, more risk for antidepressants can increase what um, uh, antidepressants can increase the risk for diabetes yes they uh, always increase uh, but if you take mm. a antidepressant it can also increase more so because the depression itself already increasing the risk then you take the uh, antidepressant that is amitriptyline and then it will increase even more and that is why amitriptyline uh, is not recommended for the first line treatment so and despite its uh, uh, low cost so amitriptyline is the cheapest one uh, and also fluvoxamine, par paroxetine and venlafaxine have increased uh, risk of diabetes. Oh. So the main adverse effect include anticholinergic symptoms, drowsiness. Uh, insomnia uh, and agitation, autostatic hypotension, prolongation of QT, that is arrhythmia, potentially fatal and cannot be treated with uh, uh, anti-arrhythmic drugs, then GI toxicity uh, and sexual dysfunction. The sexual dysfunction is the loss of libido in women and the uh, loss of erection in men. And also the weight gain, we already talked about the weight gain much. So, but usually weight gain is not a problem for most of the patients unless they, are, uh, they want to lose weight for the health uh, issues, so for the health purposes. Uh, so, and uh, usually the uh, three cyclic uh, antidepressants and monoamine oxidase inhibitors have more frequent adverse effects than the, the second generation selective serotonin uh, inhibitors or serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. So this is uh, the you know, common rule. So, however, the, there are plenty of uh, uh, adverse effects. Patients uh, mostly comply for the weight gain and sexual dysfunction. So, like, uh, and then sometimes insomnia. For the insomnia, you can prescribe the uh, anxiolytics, like the benzodiazepines, uh, and anticholinergic are usually not common for the second generation drugs. So almost no, and uh, the mirtazapine is the only, so the, there are also atypical antidepressants that are mirtazapine, bupropione, uh, and agomelatine, and these are, so mirtazapine has a much drusiness adverse effects. Uh, that is why it should not be used in the drivers. So, in those patients that drive regularly.
uh, and uh, dosage is also very important and usually uh, uh, we should start with the low doses so the adverse effects are minimal and uh, uh, however the even low doses can be uh, can lead to the side effects especially in the old patients uh, and I uh, usually the doses for the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors are started uh, with uh, about 5 or 5 to 25 milligram so it's 5 milligram for the fluoxetine uh, and uh, Sandy what is the common uh, drug for uh, for the depression in Egypt Uh, citalopram. Citalopram is, is 10 milligram. One. So for the citalopram, uh, uh, the starting dose is uh, 10 milligram. Five. 10, 10. Mm -hmm. Five will be not effective at all. Do they prescribe five? Uh, I know people who take half a pill. Uh, Maybe the pill is uh, 20 milligrams, I don't know. So Maybe, I mean, maybe the dosage is... Uh, if it's not recommended to use 20 milligram pill and divide it half, because when you divide pill uh, by half, the dose can be spread unevenly. Mm -hmm. So that is why, and usually the cost of the 20 milligram is twice as a 10 milligram tablet. Is it true in Egypt? Uh, I don't know about the price. Uh, usually it's, uh, it's uh, like it's, it's true for the most of the uh, drugs and countries. So that is why there is no any reason to buy a 20 milligram and divide it by half if when you can buy uh, 10 milligram uh, two packs of the 10 milligram for the same money so yes no. uh, i'm just guessing because uh, i know some people who will divide a pill maybe they so divide. i'm just guessing that maybe it's 20 okay. if maybe. the dosage is five is okay it's 10. uh anyway when you become a pharmacist you should explain that uh, they should not do that and then if they use a 5 milligram because they don't tolerate 10 milligram because of the side effects that is not effective treatment they should stop that so they should switch uh, to the another medicine and with the s uh, with the citalopram the uh, it's two tablets so st starting dose is the 10 milligram per day and the then the dose should be increased gradually over the uh, first month and uh, so the mean dose is about 20 from 20 to 40 milligram per day this can be divided to two uh, uptakes like one at the morning one at the evening like if you have a 10 milligram tablet then usually uh, they take one tablet at the morning and one tablet before the bed and uh, like at the same time at 8 o'clock at the morning at 8 o'clock uh, at the evening so they have 20 milligram per day and uh, all, uh, there is a generic so if the patients want to save on the treatment uh, there are generics available for the citalopram 
and uh, for the S-citalopram is uh, has the same efficacy and the side effects because S-citalopram is converted to the citalopram in the body. The only, the only difference is the dose. Uh, the initial dose is 10 mg, as same as citalopram, and uh, the uh, usual dose is 10 from 10 to 20 mg, that is twice as low as the citalopram. So, uh, for those uh, for those of you sending for your friends, so you should uh, check if if your friends and following this doses if they don't they are wasting their money and time so uh, uh, so the dose actually depends on the type of the uh, uh, of the antidepressant so and uh, the low doses can be as effective as high doses, uh, but the minimal dose should be taken for the efficacy. But most patients will decrease the dose because of the side effects. But when you lose side effects, you also lose the efficacy. So you can you cannot have a uh, treatment effective treatment without side effects. So it's not possible. Just not possible. If someone tells you that he or she don't have side effects from the antidepressant, that means that uh, he or she is taking the dose lower than minimal effective dose. And the uh, uh, antidepressants develop their effect, first slow effect in two weeks starting to so before evaluating the efficacy usually the antidepressants should be taken during at least two months so for the development of the maximum effect uh, they require to be taken regularly every day during two months and the first efficacy so the will develop only in two weeks. So first two weeks there will be no effect at all. Uh, so sometimes uh, some patients will see first uh, in uh, first responses in six weeks only so one and a half month is required to develop the effect uh, so so the maximum response is usually about six weeks up to six weeks so but usually it's about one month uh, and then uh, the treatment is very is usually continuous uh, and sometimes the maintenance treatment is indicated uh, if the patient is has an increased risk of recurrence. Uh, and uh, sometimes other types of the drugs can be uh, combined, like antipsychotics, mood stabilizers, uh, anxiolytics. We already started anxiolytics, and also John's Ward. Do you have John's word in Egypt? Uh, excuse me. Do you have? Uh, do you remember the John's word? No. Zveraboy in Russian. Hypericum perforatum in Latin. What is this? Do you remember Hypericum perforatum, Zveraboy in Russian? No. You don't remember? We studied it when you, we studied botany. 
What what was it? Hypericum perforatum. It's the plant name. Oh, we don't remember, of course. Do you have a uh, pharmacognosy? We just started here. Yeah. Just started. So, Hypericum perforatum or St. John's wort uh, is effective antidepressant. So, okay. the, there is. So, it is the only effective medicinal plant. So, that is why you should remember that. It's St. John's wort or Hypericum perforatum. Uh, in Russian, it is. Zveraboy prodravlenny. Or just Zveraboy. Okay, uh, anyway, it can be used uh, as an additional treatment. It is not effective alone, but can be used. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, we have at uh, one biochemistry offline class. Can okay. I, can okay. Of course, of course, uh, because our study is over, uh, like uh, I'm already uh, going to conclude. So no questions, I think. No, thank okay, you. Okay, good. Then I'll uh, see you next see week you. and uh, uh, have a good journey to bio biology or biochemistry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. See you next week. Bye. See you.